What I was about to do was not something I used to approve of, but Berkeley had changed me. I knew there were those who would feel disdain for it, but I thought I might just take the leap. My 15-year-old daughter, Lil, had been obsessing about it for months. Mom, please. Crystal and her mom did it. It's a mother-daughter bonding thing. Crystal's mom was still a hippie, so I didn't find that very persuasive. I knew that if we went down this path, there was no going back. The effect was permanent, and Las Vegas was the only safe place to do it. <laughs> Lil had researched it. Tattooing was legal in Nevada at 16. In California, the legal age was 18. A birthday trip to the Green Dragon Tattoo Parlor was her dream. Since my 60th birthday was a week after hers, I was seriously considering it. Maybe I would get one, too. It seemed dangerous. I would be the first in my family to get a tattoo. I wondered if I had been unduly influenced by my colleague, Lakeisha, who had a stunning shoulder tattoo. She had told me that expressing herself with a tattoo at 16 had kept her from doing drugs or having wild sex. I had been raised to believe that getting a tattoo was simply a precursor to drugs and wild sex. <laughs> But then I had also been taught that smoking a joint led to heroin addiction, and that hadn't happened, so I was probably safe. I agreed to go. We pulled into the Motel 6 on Tropicana Avenue, directly across from Hooters at MGM Grand, and crashed for the night. The next morning, we drove to the Green Dragon, Entering through a yellow door, emblazoned with a slithering red-eyed dragon flaunting a forked tongue. Once inside, I scanned the clean and cheerful room. A tall Caucasian man with a ponytail and multiple tattoos on his muscular arms approached us with a grin. My name is Silver. May I help you? Yes, please. We'd like a tattoo, I said. I felt a little cringe. She quickly slid between us and masterfully began discussing tribal versus Celtic versus Asian. For a minute, I thought they were discussing music, but there was no music playing. I felt like an adolescent stuck in a small space with the wrong crowd. I inquired whether they had any flowers and was escorted to a small display of hummingbirds, spider webs, black roses, and moons in various phases. There was an iris hiding in their midst with a fuzzy stamen protruding from a dark opening. It looked uncomfortably phallic to me, so I asked Silver if they ever made adjustments to their art. He assured me that they could make any changes the customer desired. I felt awkward, as if I had just asked to remove his penis. <laughs> Does it hurt, I asked, thinking I was changing the subject. No, it just feels like being repetitively pricked with a pin, he assured me. I have a low pain tolerance. Do you use anesthetics? To his credit, he kept a straight face and said, we aren't licensed anesthesiologists, so no, we don't, but we can go slowly, and of course, we can stop anytime you want. I nodded. If you take off your blouse, it will be easier to do the work, Silver said kindly. I stripped to my tank top, sank down face forward into what seemed like a massage chair, and assured myself that I had done nothing wrong. Silver worked on me, and Gypsy, a short, stocky man with a shaved head, appeared and attended to Lil. When I shot an anxious, are you OK, to Lil, she snorted and said, of course I'm OK. How are you, with a decided emphasis on the you. I ignored her. The whole procedure took only 20 minutes. The sound reminded me of a sewing machine at full speed, the electric needles pulsating, injecting ink in quick spurts. I can't say it hurt. It was more of a hardcore tingle. I couldn't wait to show Lakeisha. I felt fantastic, like a new woman, daring and rebellious, urging the universe to bring it on. Was I having a midlife crisis? or was 60 just the new 16? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>